Now, for those just joining us again, just want to remind you, you're listening to and watching the Worldwide Truth of God radio and television program. Uh, coming to you from the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Our headquarters, our international headquarters, is located at 5105 North 5th Street. That's North 5th Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, right here in the United States of America, where Pastor Gino Jennings is our leader, teacher, guide, and he's our general overseer. We'd also like to remind you, and those that have been watching this for some time, that by now you should understand that this program is by no means entertainment. It's designed uh, for the glory of God and to bring you the knowledge of God from the scriptures. If after watching this program there is a burning question or you desire to be baptized because you see the need for baptism, uh, why not write to us? Our email address is firstchurchattruthofgod.com. If you desire baptism, it's baptism at truthofgod.com. If you desire to call us, it's one 231 2201 Don't forget our online internet TV station, the TOG.tv. And now, without further ado, I present unto you the servant of God and general overseer, our leader, teacher, guide, and messenger of the almighty God, Pastor Gino Jennings. Thank you, brothers and sisters. You may be seated. <coughs> Greetings, brothers and sisters. Once again, we bear witness there's no God but one. There is no God with him. There is no God besides him. There is no God equal to him. There is no God better than him. We thank him for his divine wisdom and his perfect and infallible understanding of all things for sending holy prophets, sending holy apostles, and gave them a message that was perfect and infallible and correct. I'm grateful to God for all of our wonderful ministers and to our brothers and sisters that are here. One scripture says it is good for us to be here. We're drawing close to another year. And 2019 has been a very, very, very productive year for the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm grateful to all of you that are watching, to our brothers and sisters in Africa and Europe and Australia and New Zealand throughout all the South Pacific and across the Atlantic and the Caribbean and in Canada and throughout the wicked country of America. This is the greatest message, the greatest message that is in the earth today. It's a very old message. It was here before I was born. The Lord purposed and declared for all men, all women, to be holy. It's a strong message. You don't find people fighting too much over any other message that's coming over social media or on television. But that message of be holy it really puts heat under the devil God knows. Yes. Because the devil knows if you're holy, you take on the characteristics of God. Yes. The devil knows if you're anything else, you're what he is. What he made up. <coughs> and what he put together. Now, we want to update our brothers and sisters and let you know how many have been baptized so far. During this convocation, souls have been going down in the water every day. And this closing year convention, and we have two more days left. Yes. We have to gather up the fragments that nothing be lost. Yes. But if you remember last year, I believe we baptized 2,900 and something souls in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what was baptized last year. So 
was almost 3,000. This year, and like I said, there's only two more days left in the year. This year, by the great move of Jehovah himself, so far, we done baptized 4,562 souls. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 4,562 souls. In a year's time. 4,562 souls and there's two more days left in this year. God said about his church of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. And people that have been living longer than I, you can hear them testifying that they have never seen nothing like this. Never in all the years have they have witnessed the mighty hand of God on such a magnitude. So we give God thanks. And no credit goes to us. I'm simply an instrument, a puppet, if you will. And God is my puppet master. You know, if you put a string on a puppet's mouth, you can't blame the puppet how wide the mouth open. Glory to God. And the puppet master got in my mouth, and when he pulled that string, double D, it got to come open. And by God's permission, he has given us a divine charge. <clears throat> and have given us a divine job to go ye into all the world. And then he said, your gift will make room for you. And I bear witness, this God-given gift that he has given us is making all kind of room. The amount of requests that's coming in by the thousands People that are leaving their churches and that have left their churches by the thousands. Groups are writing us from all around the world. Listen, there's 15 of us here. There's 25 others here. There's 98 here. There's 200 here. Students have wrote us from college campuses <clears throat> and said they come together on their college campus and watch the telegas on YouTube and then hold discussions. <laughs> It's something to have something so strong. That's the thing that get me something so strong and so strict. And people flocking to it. Mm -hmm. You don't find children running the collard greens. Running to turnips. Mm -mm. Running to liver. <laughs> Nah, children don't run the collar oil. <laughs> Amen. But to have people of all ages and of all races and of all colors running to something strong and tough like this. This is sweet and sour. They had a candy when I was coming up, sweet and sour. Yeah. This is sweet because it's good for your soul and it's sour because your flesh don't want to do it. But it pay off in the long run, doesn't it? So we are grateful. Today we suppose I had a discussion with the congressman, the former congressman of Houston, Texas, uh, Mr. Beto O'Rourke. And uh, he was running for the office of the doghouse here in America. The president.
presidency of America, he dropped out. Yes. Not that he would have made a difference if he would have won. That's right. But he said if he would be elected president, he would penalize all churches who did not believe and endorse and perform same-sex marriages. And he would strip all churches of their tax-exempt status. So we had a letter sent to him to meet us today. And his secretary, his personal secretary, did call me. <clears throat> and we talked and we told her how the format would be. And she said, that's good, Pastor Jennings. That's very good. She said, but. You have a very busy schedule and he may not be able to make it would you settle for a substitute I said anybody anybody if you're five inches tall I'll hold you up I'll, I'll stand you up on the Bible anybody because why would you attack the church because you got some belief that promotes that which God is against. It goes to show you the desperation of politicians. That they are willing to believe anything if it would get them elected. So, before I go further, I want to share with my brothers and sisters that are here, and come on down, and, and my viewing audience, the letter that was sent. I'll let Dan read it to you, and let you get a chance to hear it. All right. The letter says it was dated October the 18th, uh, the year 2019. Dear Mr. Beto O'Rourke, we would like to introduce you to our assembly, which is based on the faith of holiness. We became aware of your campaign to become elected to the United States Senate following your terms, term as a member of the United States House of Representatives from the year 2013 to the year 2019 for the 16th Congressional District in the state of Texas. We are writing in regarding your proposed Equality Act as part of your presidential campaign platform in your bid to become the next President of the United States. For various, from various debates and interviews, we understand that you seek to eliminate the tax-exempt status for any nonprofit organization which would hinder or oppose human or civil rights of those individuals in the LGBTQ community. We are wholly against any discrimination practices which would deprive any person of their dignity to maintain a safe and equitable existence. While we are opposed to any violation of human rights, we would like to better understand how you perceive the challenge of civil rights violations of those identifying as LBTQ and what you desire and what you desired outcome is for those with different sentiments if the Equality Act is enacted. As you have given numerous interviews and debates across various forums, we would now like to offer you the opportunity to have a respectful and honest dialogue with an actual organization which may be targeted by your proposed act. We invite you to join us for a televised dialogue during our international end of year convocation to be held in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on October, December, on, in December the 29th <coughs> of the year 2019 at 12.30 p.m. We would like to, to provide your followers as well as others the opportunity to witness an open discussion with a faith-based organization to define the reality and opinions of civil rights and human rights to which all are entitled, yet differently defined. We hope that you will seek the, see the need for this conversation and hope that you will accept our invitation with the best, with best regard. If you or your staff is in need of further information or, fac or facilities for arrangements, please contact us and our contact information will be given. <coughs> Then the letter says, thank you in advance for your time and consideration. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Sincerely, Pastor Gino Jennings. Thank you, brother. This is what we send the congressmen. Yes. Now, 
when the announcement was made about this discussion, you know, you always have those that just hate the truth of God. I don't care what it is. If we sent an ice cream truck up their neighborhood and just dump ice cream in their living room, they'll say it's too cold. But uh, politicians are not exempted. Why was this discussion very important? Here's a man who was running for the highest office in America. And as you can see, brothers and sisters, the LGBTQRXTUVW and the XYZ are really pushing their agenda and trying to force it. And the churches around the world are bowing to the force of it. Until our young people, middle-aged and old, have become so mentally and emotionally diluted and deceived by it until they have concluded what's wrong with it. What's the matter? Some right men say it don't bother the homosexuality. Just preach the word. Well, if I preach the word, I got to bother it. Amen. Bible says be incident in season, didn't it? And out of season, reprove and rebuke. So I have to rebuke it. <coughs> I have to reprove it. And I have to do it with God's everlasting word. Don't misunderstand me. 